Funding for the production of Folks is made possible in part by the Friends of Louisiana Public Broadcasting. Everybody's just folks. Welcome to Folks. This week on Folks, we take you to both ends of the state to follow a 30-year-old football university rivalry that has become a multi-million dollar business. The annual football showdown between Grambling State University in Grambling, Louisiana and Southern University in Baton Rouge has always been more than just a football game. Since the beginning, the friendly rivalry between the two universities has been more than offense and defense on the field. Off the field, it has been offense and defense for the marching bands, student body, and faculty that has become known as the Bayou Classic. But the prize in winning this contest is more than just a trophy. It's the bragging rights for the year. Tradition for many universities and colleges today is remembered through some pictures in an old school yearbook. But for Grambling State University in Grambling and Southern University in Baton Rouge, tradition is taken very seriously. And it is through this attraction to tradition that their rivalry begins. When we bleed, we bleed blue and gold. Uh, Grambling is our, our good friend now. We don't, we, but we just like to play them and it's a lot of fun. I'm from Shreveport. That's about 60 miles from Grambling. And a lot of my home people go to Southern. So when I go home for uh, the Christmas break or for the summer, we're always talking about the Bayou Classic. Southern and Grambling are located at opposite ends of Louisiana. They were both founded near the turn of the century as predominantly black institutions of higher education. Until the 50s, Southern and Grambling were the only colleges in Louisiana that would enroll black students. As a consequence, the majority of black adults who went to college in Louisiana attended either Grambling or Southern. When football was quickly catching on as America's favorite Saturday afternoon sport, Grambling and Southern started developing what would later be classified as football powerhouses. But in 1932, when Southern and Grambling played their first football game against one another, no one would have believed that 50 years later, the friendly gridiron showdown would be considered a yearly classic. It's a group of people who have... Uh, been a part of something that's really great and they're trying to make sure that this continues to exist and, and that's what it's all about. It's, a, it's an extravaganza. Uh, it goes beyond uh, the football game. Uh, you're into the beauty pageant. You're, you're into the, the clash between the two bands. So uh, it, it's a great thing. It's a great feeling. It's a very competitive thing, but it's a very healthy competitive type of activity. What makes the rivalry so interesting is the difference between the two schools. Grambling State University is located in rural North Louisiana with a student body that numbers less than 5,000. And most of those students live on campus. By most university attendance records, Grambling is considered small. It was started in 1901 by Charles Adams as an institution exclusively to serve the poor and teach them how to survive. Most of the curriculum centered around agriculture, technical training, and school basics. Through the years, the school gradually evolved from the colored industrial and agricultural school of Lincoln Parish to the present 340-acre setting of Grambling State University. 
Grambling's curriculum has changed dramatically in its first 81 years. Today, Grambling's main courses are arts and sciences, business, and education, with a few classes in graduate studies. Here on the other side of the state, in the capital city of Baton Rouge, is Southern University's main campus. Southern's other two campuses are located in New Orleans and Shreveport. The undergraduate student population of these three campuses, combined with the graduate school and law school, not only makes Southern a whole lot bigger than Grambling, it also makes Southern the country's largest black university. Southern was created during the Louisiana 1879 Constitutional Convention for the purpose of educating persons of color. Located first in New Orleans, then moved to the banks of the Mississippi in Baton Rouge in 1914, Southern's curriculum grew from liberal arts and letters to that of a college specializing in education, business, and engineering. In 1948, the law school was added, and in 1956 and 1964, the additional campuses in New Orleans and Shreveport were included into the system. Today, there are more than 15,000 Southern students who, like the smaller student body at Grambling, not only attend classes during the week, but also come out on weekends to cheer their favorite football team on to victory. Everybody, I think on their campus, more so, but on our campus, we're just confident that we're going to win. But on their campus, they just be, you know, their main aim is to beat Southern. And I guess a little our main aim is out of all the teams we play, we want to beat Grambling. Why Grambling? Why is there, you know, this, this particular intense rivalry with Grambling? Well, Grambling and Southern is the, first of all, the two uh, predominantly black schools in the, in the state. And I don't know, it's, it is, in some instances, a close tie. And it, all of us want to be on top. It's definitely a, a real rivalry. We consider the Bayou Classic as a serious event. This is the last football game of the year for Grambling. It's been that way for a number of years. And we always play Grambling, I mean Southern, with our maximum. And I always felt that Grambling was kind of a rural area type school and Southern was kind of suburban area type school. And, and uh, you know, the poor kids always wanted to beat the, uh, beat the rich kids. So I think it's important. Anytime you've got two schools in the state that play against each other in any athletic event, or in anything, I think you want to beat that particular school for you can uh, brag about it at least for, for one year. It's just a kind of a fun type of thing more than anything else. Grambling and Southern are two of six teams in the Southwestern Athletic Conference. As far as the conference is concerned, the Southern Grambling matchup is just one game in the season of SWAC football competition. But while it might be just another game to the conference, it's practically the only game to die-hard Southern and Grambling fans. I played against when I was in undergrad school, and I admit it's just in us to be a right uh, to, to go at each other. Why? I mean, if you're both the black schools in the state, why do you need a rivalry? Well, it's just something about us understanding that we feel we just live better than Grambling. I guess Grambling feel that they're better than us, so we have to fight to see who is the best in, uh, for bragging rights in Louisiana. When we noticed that when Southern would come, all the, the persons in business places up here, they would sell out of food and the hotels would sell out, and we could really see it was a big thing, but the thing that, that uh, got our attention Whenever they came to play us, uh, when the crowd would get up around uh, 14 or 15,000, they would just break the fence down. I had always believed that you could uh, play, that Southern and Gramlin could play in any cow pasture or any place else in the state of Louisiana, that, and that as many people as could find their way there would actually uh, come to see us play. It took me a while to realize, you know, the importance of the game, you know, but after being around, uh, the kids here and uh, realizing that, you know, they made it, the kids, the students make it important because, uh, like I say, for, for the bragging rights, it's, it's, it's very important. If you ask the Southern enthusiasts who their second favorite college team is, they would probably say Grambling. And if you ask a Grambling supporter who their second choice is for a college football team, they would probably say Southern. So what's all the fuss about when the two schools meet opposite one another on the field? But whenever we would play, we had a crowd because uh, the people knew, uh, well, they had relatives on our team, relatives on the southern team, and it just was a natural rivalry. And I was from Baton Rouge, and uh, all the people were concerned about, and, uh, well, when will you ever beat Southern? And, uh, and all the people that Southern were about, uh, 
Don't let Gremlin beat you. Of course, because it's a family affair. You see, I have more people at Gremlin than I have here at Southern. And I was, I'm a former student in Southern. I played in a band in Southern. Now I taught in a laboratory school, a high school in Southern. And now I'm teaching in a college in Southern. But I have more relatives living and working at Gremlin than I have here. Well, so it's a family affair. And, and, and just, I'm just, just as though my family is entwined within Gremlin, we'll ensure that all of many of the other Southernites' families are entwined with Gremlin. Because the Bayou Classic is a family affair, it lost its football-only status a long time ago. The overwhelming 60,000-plus crowds for the event followed the game around the state until a big enough home for the Classic was found in the New Orleans Superdome. Other activities, such as a beauty pageant, basketball game, and formal ball, were added to the lineup, stretching the formerly one-day football get-together into a four-day extravaganza. One of the added events to the classic is the Battle of the Bands, between the world-renowned Southern University Marching Band and the world-renowned Grambling State University Marching Band. Over the past few years, the band competition has stirred up a Grambling Southern rivalry all of its own. Well, it's really one of the most intense engagements and so on, uh, performances that we make during the uh, school year. Why? There's quite a rivalry, uh, you know, between Grambling and Southern, and we want to do our part to support that uh, our end of the rivalry. What do you mean, support your end of the rivalry? What do you have to do? Well, simply try to outperform the other band. You know, it's a matter of opinion, because uh, you may say that uh, you might like Grambling band, and another individual might like the Southern band. It's just a matter of which one you like. It's not a matter of morals, it's a matter of taste, which one you like. The high-stepping, all-male, 180-member band wear the blue and gold colors of the Southern University Jaguars. Under the direction of Isaac Greggs, who is himself a member of the band, the marching Jags hold up their end of the school spirit. I have always admired the Bramlin Band because the band director and I are very good friends. We have been friends for years. And although we are rivalries, and we be fighting like I don't know what, I don't have football for you. But you know, after the football for you, after the show is over, I mean, you know, we go back to our same thing that we've been doing all the while. He's been there for 30 years, and you've been here for 13. Does he have any kind of edge on you? Of course. Years. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> That's all. Not but years. Then what's the two different styles? Well, now, I, I wouldn't be able to describe his style, but I can describe my style if you like my style. I like something that is flashy. I like something that is creative. I like a show that is... Intricate, I like a show that's gonna do something other than dance. State University Marching Tigers usually fight back with their own precision stepping and playing. With the watchful eyes of veteran band leader Conrad Hutchinson watching every move, the 150-member Grambling Band has been known to steal the show. The Southern's band is pretty good. Oh, yes. We regard it as one of the best bands in the country. Do you have to get psyched up for the Bayou Classic, especially since you're dealing with the rivalry and with a good band and with a good football game, usually? Well, when you finally enter the atmosphere, uh, there is a feeling that I've got to do, I've got to perform. Mm -hmm. So what do you do as far as, you know, like psyching your students up? All we have to do is say, there's a Southern band across the way. For a person who has never seen the Grambling Band perform, what is it about the, the Grambling Band? Well, probably the style, the tempos at which we march, the tight dance steps that we try to, to uh, execute, and, well, the moving type show that we attempt to do. This year, the Grambling Band has forfeited the Bayou Classic Battle of the Bands competition so that they can march in a previously arranged appearance in Japan. We're going to miss not being present 
uh, as you know, there was a mix-up in the dates. Originally, the classic was slated for the 20th, and we were to leave for Japan on the evening of the 20th. We had our commitment, and we still had to keep it. Because of the Japan trip mix-up, the Grambling State Marching Band won't be at the Bayou Classic this year. But here's an example of what you would have seen if there had been a Battle of the Bands at the Bayou Classic 82.
course, the main attraction for the Bayou Classic is the football game between the Southern Jaguars and the Grambling Tigers. Going into this year's competition, the Tigers lead the Jags in Bayou Classic wins 16 to 13. But in the last few years, the Southern Jaguars have won two out of three classic encounters. Leading the Grambling Tigers is legendary Eddie Robinson. His 40-year influence on the team has produced not only one of the best football teams in the country, but also one of the best coaching records anywhere around. This season, Coach Robinson went well past his 300th win with the team, and some people predict that before he steps down as head coach at Grambling, he will earn the title of having won the most college football games within a single coaching career. The Tigers go into the Bayou Classic 8-2 on the season. For the past 10 years or more, Grambling has been favored by the analysts to win the Classic. But in 1979, and again last year, the Tigers lost big to the lesser-rated Southern Jaguars. This is what you're supposed to expect. It's an athletic contest. Uh, some people going to win and some people going to lose. We've been disappointed. Uh, yeah, we last di year you were yeah, disappointed. Yeah, we were disappointed. And, of course, it's what we expected. Uh, Washington is a very fine coach. He has a very fine staff. Southern has always had fine people. And, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be tough down, down uh, uh, you know, down the lane. You're gonna Did run you let into Southern win last year? To make it more interesting for this you year. You don't. You don't do anything like that. You know, I heard somebody else say, "I don't know if any coach could possibly let anybody." You can't take anything away from uh, from uh, Washington and his staff. They did a better job of preparation than we did. They won the game. You don't do anything like that. How could a coach do that? They were better than we were that day. On the other side of the state, the winner of last year's contest, Southern head coach Otis Washington, has been working his Jags hard this season, getting them ready for the classic game of games. This is Washington's second season coaching for Southern, making him one of only a handful of top Bayou Classic participants who didn't graduate from either Southern or Grambling. As a matter of fact, uh, when I was interviewed for the job, the first question they asked was, can you beat Grambling? What was your answer? Well, I said, yeah. yeah. I guess you proved it, too, didn't you? Yeah, we, did. we had a pretty good game against them last year. Um, of course, this is another year. Grambling has a much better football team this year than they had last year, so we expect the game to be a lot tougher this year than it was last year. Why? For the revenge and for the, the bragging rights, or is it just going to be another game competition? It's a combination of both. I think uh, the uh, revenge, re revenge factor is there for them. Uh, good competition and uh, bragging rights, so we've got all three of those things going. I didn't realize how, uh, how deep-rooted this rivalry was, I guess, until last year. Yeah, I had gone to several Bayou Classic games down in New Orleans, and uh, to me it was just another football game. But I think this is something that uh, some of our fans think about when the season starts until the time for us to play ground. This year, the schools will not only split more than a half a million dollars in ticket receipts for the Bayou Classic, they will also share more than $350,000 they will get in revenue for television rights. The Ted Turner Broadcasting System plans to televise the game over the cable news network. The broadcast signal will be picked up all over the country, Hawaii, Puerto Rico, and the Virgin Islands for a potential viewing audience of 25 million Tiger or Jaguar fans. Some people say that with the thousands of dollars both schools will make off the game, the Bayou Classic has turned more into a commercial venture than a football game. We have to play Grambling every year. And if we can play them and make some money off the game too, uh, we just that much farther ahead. Let's face it, we are into the marketing business. Now, I think that's a very naive statement for anyone to say that it's not competitive, uh, to say that the spirit is not there, because when you have the number of people that have been coming to the Bayou Classic, when you can put 85,000 people into a stand, and, and, and the demand that we have for tickets, if we had 100,000 seats, we could sell 100,000 seats at the Bayou Classic. So I don't understand what they're saying, because I see the competitiveness is still there, very much alive and I'm sure that it's going to become even greater. But we, too, must be realists. Uh, our alumni uh, of the two universities must understand that uh, we need finances to run the university. So what I've seen as president in the last six years, I would say to you that the rivalry is there, and it's even more intense than it has been in the past. Although it is quiet at both Grambling and Southern right now, the rivalry is on. 
when both schools meet down in New Orleans next week for the Bayou Classic, you can bet it's going to be a good game just because of the anticipation. Right now, people say that Grambling has a slight edge just because it's a little ahead in the SWAC conference. But no matter who wins, everybody knows that when Southern and Grambling get together for a football game, it's a classic. Well, I expect to see a lot of hard hitting. I expect to see a lot of people coming out from all over the state of Louisiana and, of course, even out of the state of Louisiana. Oh, it's definitely serious. Uh, anytime Grambling and Southern play, it's got to be serious. Uh, both teams will be coming into the Bayou Classic this year basically with almost the same identical record and basically the same type of uh, ball club. So it's going to be an interesting game. My neighbor next door is from Gramlin and we tease each other. It's a good rivalry. Mm -hmm. It's not the one that you would say you get angry or something like that. I'm very confident that Gramlin State will defeat Southern University this year. We're fired up. They might have got us last year, but that's going to give us even more determination to beat them this year and we're ready for them this year. I just want Southern to know. We have faith in our team, and they know that we have faith in our team. We're going to show Grambling who's the boss. Well, I think Grambling will win. They had the momentum up. Eddie Rob won 300 games, so they going in the game off of something. They got some backup to win the game. Obviously, the Southern, the Southern Jaguars. I think they'll win because uh, we have a 6-3, and three. and the way things looking now, it'll be a 7-3 and three record, so obviously we'll have the psychological and emotional edge going into the Bayou class. It's most definitely a rivalry, but um, it's a lot of fun, and people go down there with the intent on having a good time. Of course, we all want to win, but then we're never really, really disappointed when it comes down to it because we know that this is another black school, and it's just a whole lot of fun. Well, this is where I usually say that this is the end of our program, and I'll see you again next week. But unfortunately, this is my last appearance on Folks. Next week in this time slot will be Festival, Louisiana Public Broadcasting's fundraising drive. And in three weeks, Folks will return with a whole new host and lineup of programs. Good night. Funding for the production of Folks is made possible in part by the Friends of Louisiana Public Broadcasting.